the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And why? Because I have all I need. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, hello, good morning, God bless you, and God keep you this morning. Thank you for tuning on to me once again. Praise God, Lord, the Lord is your shepherd. Praise God, you shall not want for nothing. You should have all you need. Praise God. Um, I wanted to share with you uh, I'm talking about. Praise God, Lord is my shepherd. Shall I shall not want. Praise God. Um, I'm going to read about Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Jesus and the Samaritan woman, out of John chapter 4, said, Jesus knew the Pharisee had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciple, it said them, his disciple did. So he left Judah and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way, even the, eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of <clears throat> Sychar. It says, near the field, field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob well was there, and Jesus, tied from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. It says, soon, as Samar soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her please give me a drink he was alone at the time because his disciple had gone into the village to buy some food and that's also the book of Genesis chapter 33 verse 19 it says the woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritan she said to Jesus you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. But, sir, you don't have a robe or a bucket, she said. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you are greater than our ancestor, Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his son and his animal enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It become a flesh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied, Jesus said. You're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet, so tell me why is it that you Jews instant that Jerusalem is the only place of worship? While we Samaritan claim it is here at Mount Zarzim where our ancestor worship. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritan know very little about the one you worship while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews, but the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. 
The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. And that's also in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, verse 28 to 41. Verse 25 said, the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Jesus, it says, just then his disciple came back, then was shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them the nerves you know none of them had the nerve to ask what do you want with her or why are you talking to her the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone come and see a man who told me everything I ever did could he possible be the Messiah so the people came streaming from the village to see him Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God. Who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying for a month between planting and harvest. But I say wake up and look around. The fields are already ripped for harvest. The, harvest, the harvesters are paid good wages. And the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits. Both the planter and the harvester alike. You know the saying, one plant and another harvest. And it's true. It sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others had already done the work. And now you will get to greater the harvest. And the next verse talk about many Samaritan believes. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When they came to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe. Now just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. And the next verse talks about Jesus healed an officer's son. At the end of the two days, Jesus went on to Galilee. He himself had said that a prophet is not honored in his own hometown. Yet, the Galilee answered, Welcome him. For they had been in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration and had seen everything he did there. And that's also in the book of uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 24. Verse 46 here says, As he traveled through Galilee, he came to Cana, where he had turned the water into wine. There was a government of officer officer in nearby uh, Capri Caprinium whose son was very sick. When he heard that Jesus had come and Judas to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Caprinium, Cap Caprinium to, heal, to, heal, to heal his son who was about to die. And that's also in the book of John chapter 2 verse 1 and Verse 1 through 11. Verse 48 says, Jesus asked, Will you never believe me? He said, Will you never believe in me unless you see I mean, miraculous, miraculous signs and wonders? The officer pleaded, Lord, please come now 
before my little boy died. Then Jesus told him, go back home. Your son will live. And the man believed what Jesus said and started home. And that's also the book of uh, Matthew chapter 8 verse 13. In verse 51 here it says, it says, while the man was on the way, some of his servants met him with the news, you know, with the news that his son was alive and well. He asked them when the boy had begun to get better, and they replied, yesterday afternoon at one o'clock his fever suddenly disappeared. Then the father realized that was the very time Jesus told, you know, that the very time Jesus had told him, your son will live. And he will. He said, and he, he said, and he and his entire household believed in Jesus. This was the second miraculous sign Jesus did in Galilee after coming from Judah. Praise God. And that's also the book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 5 to 13. Praise God. Like people don't even believe, they don't believe, they hear these things, but they don't believe, they don't take, they're not taking heed for their own, so they're not getting faith, having that faith. When Jesus said, do something, do it. He said, oh, don't look back, don't worry about nothing. When I say do something, when I, you know, tell you to do something, to direct you in the right path, you direct you in the right to where to go, do it. When Jesus speaks, when Jesus, when Jesus speaks to you, and when he tells you to do something, do it. Don't wait, don't hesitate, just do do move when Jesus said when Jesus say something when Jesus speak move do it don't hold back don't put it off just do glory be to God because he knows what he's doing at all times like he told his man go home or your, your son gonna live your, he will, he'll be well he'll be all right glory be to God and by faith that man went on home glory be to God his son and that little boy his boy was saved and um well he was healed he was healed glory be to God to the grace of Jesus, to the grace of God, to the grace of God through Jesus, praise God, hallelujah, um, whew, glory be to God, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, shall not want for nothing, when he say do something, he will do, when he, I mean, you supposed to do, when he say do something, do your dues, glory be to God, don't worry about that, I want to go there, I want to follow, don't worry about it, when you tell you to do, you do, do your dues, glory be to God, do your dues, um, I'm a other book here. Uh, I'm a other you know, Jesus said book here that you know, I got from TBN years ago. In fact, I had this book over. Whew, I said over. Uh, I said about over 13, over 14 years. I had this book I got from TBN. Well, they mailed they mailed me actually this book years ago. When I was sowing my seeds when it was like even when I wasn't sowing my seed, they were just sending me stuff, sending me books, just sending me all kind of stuff. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. But um I'm gonna read about true righteousness. It says, But uh, but says, But I warn you, unless you obey God better than the teacher of religious law and the Pharisee do, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven at all. And that's also in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 20. You know, the Pharisees were exacting, exacting, and scrupulous in their attempt to follow their law. So how could Jesus reasonably call us, you know, call us to greater obedience than there? The Pharisee weakness was that they were content to obey the law outwardly without allowing God to change their heart. You know, change our heart, change your attitudes. Jesus was saying, therefore, that the quality of our goodness should be greater, should be greater than of the Pharisees. They looked at Pipeus, but they were far from the kingdom of God. Like they looked like they were holy, they looked like they were in the world, they looked like they were Christian, you know, but they were born from the kingdom. They weren't loving, they weren't doing what they what God told them to do. You can believe, you can shout, you can read, you can dance, you can sing, 
if you ain't doing the will of God, you know, you don't have the love of God, you know, then you can't forgive, you know, the person who probably hurt at you, you can't forgive, you won't forgive, it's like, how you going to enter the kingdom? You know, you can't have step, good or bad, don't mix. You can't be one way, one way, another, another way because you're singing in choir or you're usher or you're a deacon. You know, you're doing something, uh, paying your tithes off. That don't make you all right and all together. Cause without the love of God, nothing works anyway. You have to be the whole fool. He don't want no pieces missing. You got to be the whole thing. Praise God. Together. Yes, we fall short, but you to get back in line, get back in order, get, get it together. Hallelujah. It says, uh, God judge our heart as well as our deed. For it is in the heart that our real elegance, you know, lies. Be just as concerned about your attitude that people don't see as about your action that are seen by all. Take care. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired because they it said because then when you will lose the reward from your father in heaven when you give a gift to someone in need don't shout about it it's as the hypocrites do the hypocrites do that you know blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charities I assure you they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. And that don't mean, you know, don't tell somebody you in darkness. That don't mean do your left hand go cheat and go sleep on your wife or go sleep on somebody else. That don't mean that. You know, not let your uh, your, your right hand know, your, your left hand know what your right hand, your right hand know what your, let me read this one more time. <laughs> Don't let, they say, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. Because your left hand is out there probably doing something wrong. It's not in the word of God. You know what I mean? You know, don't tell. It's, it don't mean, it's not saying that you, when you're doing left or you're doing wrong, you know, and then you and then don't tell what your right hand doing with the left and your left hand doing with the right. They don't mean, they don't mean doing that. They don't mean necessarily talking about that. It's talking about you doing something good. Because sometimes when you do something good and you have some plan to do somebody some good, you know, this is just why it's good. Because I didn't even say that to somebody. Because somebody always got something to say. Somebody always want to run them off. Or this or that. Or criticize. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, all this kind of stuff. Something like that. You know what I mean? Go to your left and go cheat and all that stuff. And then whatever the left hand do it, do it. And then the right hand, you know, just keep it to yourself. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Because people be getting stuff like that all messed up. Some people, you know, they read it says, but when you give to someone, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. Don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. Don't tell somebody, I mean, it's like, don't tell somebody else what your right hand is doing, because when you're going to be right, you're going to do something right. You're not talking about going out to sleep and messing around and all the kind of crazy stuff, sneaking and dodging and, and you know, backsliding. You're not talking about that. When they when they say that, you know, don't let you know, don't let the goodness you say basically don't let your goodness in the right hand know what your left hand doing. You know, somebody always got something to say. You do good, you know, they still got something to say, just do it. You know, just do it. Just just do. Do you do. Some people be like taking that, you know, I ain't let you know what I'm doing. I ain't letting my left hand know what my right hand doing. I ain't let my left know my right. I ain't let my right know my left. I mean they just some people just they they just talk like that. They just they just they just do, some folks. They says, But when you give to someone, don't tell your left hand, what your right hand is doing. Give your gift in secret, and your father, who knows all secret, will reward you. And that's also in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 4. The terms hypocrites are used there describes people who do good, it says people who do good acts for appearance only not out of compassion or other goods motive their actually may be good but their motives are hollow the attention they may get is their only reward but God will reward those who are sincere in their faith and acts of charity a tree is identified by its fruit make a true let's say make a tree Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. 
make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. You broad of snakes, how could evil man like you speak what is good and right? For whatever it is in your heart determines what you say. A good person produces good words from a good heart. And an evil person produces evil words from an evil heart. And I tell you this, that you must give an account on judgment day of evil, I mean of every idle word you speak. The word you say now reflects your fact. It says fate, fate, your fate. Then either you will be justified by them or you will be condemned. And that's also in the book of Matthew chapter 12 verse 33 to 37. Jesus remind us that we say reveal what is in our heart. What kind of words comes from your mouth. That it is identification of what is in your heart. You can solve your heart problem. However, just by cleaning up your speech, you must allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with new attitude and motive so your speech will be cleansed at its source. It is the thoughts, life, that defiles you. For from within, out of person, heart comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, thefts, you know, thief, murderers, I mean, murderers, and adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, eagerness for lustful and pleasure, and evil, and lander, and pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defiles you and make you unacceptable to God. And that's also the book of Mark chapter 7 verse 20 through 23. An evil action begins with a single thought, allowing our mind to dwell on lust, evil, hatred, or revenge will lead to sin. Don't defile yourself by focusing on evil. Instead, follow Paul's advice in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And think about what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. No one light a lamp and then hide it or put it under a basket. Indeed, I mean, instead, it is put on a lampstand to give light to all who enter the room. Your eyes is a lamp for your body. A pure eye lets sunshine into your soul. But an evil eye shuts out the light. It shuts out the light and plunges you into darkness. Make sure that the light you think you have is not really darkness. If you are filled with light with no dark corners, then your whole life will be random. As through a flood light is shining on you. And that's also in the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 33 through 36. The lamp is Christ. The eye represents spiritually understanding and insight. Evil desire make the eye less sensible, sensible, sensitive and plot out the light of Christ's presence. If you have heard... Time seeing God at work in the world and in your life, check your vision or any sinful desire blinding you to Christ. Check your vision and say it. Check it out. Check, 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 check it out. Check your vision. Let me read that last verse again. It says, or any sinful desires. Any sinful desire you have, like get it out of you, you know, stop it, get out that dark, get out all that sin and desires, think some good, think some, think some positive. But it says any, it says any sinful desires blinding you, blinding you to Christ, 
Get it out of you. Praise God. Get it out of you. In every simple way that you have, get it out of you. Glory be to God. Change the way you are. Change the way you think. Change the all that change away from all that evil stuff and get it right with Christ. Praise God. Because he the only one gonna make it right. The true righteous of Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you and God keep you. I'm gonna pray for each and every last one of you. Like all like I always say, um, in spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you're doing, you know. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't know about you, but the Lord is my shepherd. And I should not want. Want for nothing, want for nothing, want for nothing, want for nothing. Glory be to God. You should not be wanting for nothing. You should already have it. Praise God. You me, it no matter what it look like, but it don't look like I have it. It don't look like this, you know. You don't even don't worry about what it look like. You should just believe that you already have it. Will you believe it? Someday you will see it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because that's what I believe. And I hope you're on that same level, same path too, same road too, and get all that darkness out of you if you don't think it. Get all that darkness out of you and think the likeness of Jesus and how he wants you to think and how he wants you to live and how he wants you to be and what he wants you to do. Praise God. Anyway, hallelujah. Thank you for tuning on to me once again as always. It's a blessing. And I thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, pray for those watching. God bless you all. And God keep your pray, Lord, just keep you strong. And keep you together with your family. You may have a somebody, somebody probably happen in your life or your family or whatever situation. You may have a broken up or something happened. I don't know. I pray, Lord, to get it together for the better, for the good in Jesus' name. Don't leave your wife. Don't leave your husband. Just get it together. Get back together. Do what you got to do to make it right in Jesus' name. Love one another in Jesus' name. The first, love God. Love yourself and love God. Put God in the situation and in your business all the time. Get all that stuff and evil ways out of you and get live for the light, live for the righteous in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. I pray you'll take to the Lord in prayer in Jesus' name. He knows all about it. You know, ask him to forgive you. Without playing the blame game and blaming this and blaming that, Lord, God, just pray you would just, you know, speak to the people, Lord Jesus. Help them and stop playing the blaming game and trying to blame this and blame that and just check their own self out. Check your own self out at Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you and God keep you. You may know somebody going through something. I don't know. It could be you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what bill. I don't know what debt you may be in. All I know is God will fix it. He'll work it out for you. If you just trust and hold on and believe in him in Jesus' name, he will bring you out. He see you going through, but he will bring you out. Glory be to God. Because I believe. In spite of whatever I'm going through, he will bring me out too in glory. In Jesus' name, yes, he will. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Glory be to God. I believe. Because he wants you to have more. He wants you to do more. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. And I rebuke every sickness and every disease right now. Lord, just heal and touch right where you hurt. Heal and touch right where you're pain in Jesus' name. And by his strike, you are healed. You were healed in Jesus' name. If you believe. In Jesus' name, I pray. I pray no weapon form against you shall prosper. In Jesus' name, I pray you just be blessed. Lord, to guide you, lead you, and guide you wherever you're about to go, wherever you're about to do it, back home safely. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that he'll go all his angels around you and protect you. In Jesus' name, all the days of your life. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. He didn't say no someday. He didn't say someday. Glory be to God. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will take heed and believe. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name I pray. But you in for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Goodness and mercy. Glory be to God. And I receive it. And I hope you receive it too. Goodness and mercy. He don't want you having all that tragedies, all that crazy stuff going on in your life. Get right with Christ. He'll make it right. Get right with Christ. Believe. Do your dues. You know, make that step. He'll do the rest. I mean, you just got to keep on doing it. I mean, do he'll do the rest and you stop. You have to keep on pushing, keep on doing it, right? Keep on doing no matter what, whatever come your way. God will take care of you. God, yes, he will. He will take care of you. Glory be to God. That's what he got angels for. He'll take care of you. We'll just send his angels out. Yeah, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. They block that person from stopping. Go, go, go block that person from messing with my anointing. Hallelujah. He will make a way. He will make a way out of no way. Well, you didn't think it's a way. He will make a way for them bills to be paid. 
He'll make a way for you to keep that roof over your head. He'll make a, a way for you to pay that mortgage on your house or whatever it is, whatever business. Hallelujah. He'll make a way for you to pay that car load off. Glory be to God. Yes, he will. He'll make a way for your kids to get off drugs if you have any kids. Or get off alcohol or stop gang banging or whatever. He will make a way if you trust and believe. Yes, he will. He'll make a way for your kids to get, off, get out of jail, get out of prison. Glory be to God. He'll make that judge to give him less time or no time at all. Glory be to God. Yes, he will. If you believe, he'll let that kid, he'll make that kid get off drugs or alcohol or prostitute, whatever it is. Glory be to God. He will make a way if you believe. Yes, he will. Glory be to God. He'll fix it. My God will fix it. He will fix every situation. Whatever you win, ain't nothing too hard for God. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Keep doing your do. Keep loving and doing what's right. That I mean get out court and do wrong because things going on crazy. You may know somebody could be your kids or grandkids acting stupid or whatever. You still do your do. That's why he got you for this. For you to be strong. Be strong in the Lord. And he will take care of you. You do your do. He will take care of you. Whoever else around you. Your family. Whoever else it is. He will take care of them too. Glory be to God. Yes he will. Praise God. God bless you. God keep you. No, I got to I got excited because I know my God. He will fix it. Somebody may be in the hospital right now and on the, on the probably on that deathbed waiting to die. He will fix it. God will move. He will move in that person's body and get them all up. Get them on back on course and on track and tell them live, I am healed. Get off that bed and say, I am healed. God heal me. Glory be to God. Get yourself up. Get yourself back in order. Tell that devil, get up under my feet behind me in Jesus' name. I will live. I am going to live, devil. Get up under my feet in Jesus' name, devil. I rebuke you in Jesus' name, devil. I'm going to live. You know, you have to talk to it. You know, speak to it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I am rich. Glory be to God. I do have what God has for me. To, what he said I'm going to have. Hallelujah. I have what God have blessed me to have. And when I don't have it, I still thank God that I have it. Even when I don't, don't, when I don't see it, I still thank God for I is on the way. Glory be to God, and I'm not thinking until I all the way get it. I'm still going to thank Him, even though, I do, even though when I don't have it. Glory be to God. I don't care what it look like. I have it. Glory be to God. Won't for nothing. I shall not want for nothing. Glory be to God. And I hope you shall not want for nothing either. I don't care how broke you is. Uh, you better be thanking God that you is broke right now. You will thank God someday. Keep on thanking him. Someday you won't be broke. Glory be to God. So he'll make a way out of no way for you. If you just trust and believe. He will make you. He will. He just will make a way. You know, be thankful for what you got. Then be thankful for what you got right now. Sometimes why God can't even show you and bless you with more. You don't be thankful for what you have. What's the little bit that you do have. People just have to need to learn how to thank God the little what they do have. Lord, I don't have it yet, but I thank you for what I do have. Lord, I don't have this or whatever, whatever that yet, but I thank you, Lord, for what I do have. Be thankful for what you have. Thank, be, be thankful for the small. You know, so you can be ready for the big. That's how you do it. You be thankful for the small, so you be ready how to thank God anyhow. Big or little. You know, you, you need to practice now. Pass that first test. Be thankful for what you got right now. If he didn't do nothing but wake you up this morning, be thankful for what you got now. Hallelujah. He woke you up this morning. Thank God that he woke you up this morning. That's something to be thankful for. Glory be to God. Be thankful all the time. In Jesus' name, be thankful all the time. Glory be to God. No matter what it look like, no matter what you can't see, no matter what it feel like, it ain't based on what the feel like, or you ain't in the move, you don't feel like, you don't know what I'm going through, no. God sees it all, you need to be thankful for whatever you're going through. Hard time, whatever, he didn't say what's going to come, no trials or tribulations, he didn't say it's going to come. You know, it's, on, it's depending on you, how you going to make up, I mean, you know, you're still trusting God, or you going to give up because of trial or tribulation, you know, this happened, I don't forget, I ain't, I ain't worried about praising God, I don't want to hear all that, and that's the best time to hear it, that's the best time to hear the word, dude, that's the best time when you're going through something, that's the best time to hear the word of God, that's the best time to bow down, get on your knees and pray, while you're looking for the blessing real quick, you need to be bowing down, you know, hallelujah, it's time to God. 
on your knees. Praise God. Everybody want to look, look. Everybody want to look good. They just want to suffer. They just forget about bowing down first. They just want up. They just want the fast way, the quick way. I want, I want, I want. I ain't bowing down. I just want. That's just like we on the job. Everybody want to start off on the top automatically. I ain't work for no minimum wage. I ain't, I ain't work for that. They just give me $10, $11 an hour. I ain't work for nothing less. Sometimes you got to start from the bottom and work your way back up. Praise God. While you looking up for the higher stuff, you need to be looking down. But the higher stuff will lift you up. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anyway, God bless you. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. I hope so. Praise God. Anyway, God bless and God keep you. And I love you. I love you. I love you. Because God says so. No matter what, you know, no matter what nobody says or whatever, it don't even matter. It's about what God says. It's what God says, what God knows about me. That's all that matters. It's about, you know, I know where I'm going. I may know where I've been. I've been through hard time, whatever time, and good time, bad time, but you know what? I mean, I got the best time with Christ Jesus. I mean, that's just the best time, I mean, with Him. I could just talk to Him any time, any day, anywhere, no matter no, no matter what time it is. That's just the best time with Christ Jesus, any time. That's just the best time, the best time I've ever had in my life with Christ Jesus. Call Him up. Call Him up. Tell Him what I want. And sometimes I don't have to ask Him for nothing. I can just be like, thank you, Lord, for what I already have. Thank you, Lord, for what you blessed me with to have already. Thank you, Lord, for this air I breathe. Thank you, Lord, for the strength. You know, all the time it has to be, I'm asking God for everything, you know, every time I pray. I'm a master with this or a master with it. He already know what I need. You know, you know, it's like when I'm going to just be, just be thankful. Thank you, Lord, for what I don't have. Thank you, Lord, for what I do have. Praise God. Because he'll see you out. He'll bring you out. He see you through already. He'll bring you out. If you believe. He work for those that believe. If you don't believe, then nothing don't work for the one that don't believe. But when you believe, my Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe and you're a real, really, 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 really true believer, things work. Something happened when you really believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God, for your sin, for the blood, you would know where you'll be. Praise God. But anyway, God bless you. And God keep you. Remember, I love you. And God love you too. He loves you more. Praise God. He knows I'm not a people pleaser. He knows my heart. But you know I love you. Even though I don't have to see you. Because you know the love of God. Going well, for the love of God. I don't think I'll be on here talking to you about that. I could be doing something else. Talking to you. Reading to you. The word of God and praying for you all. That's love. You know that's love. No matter what you look like. No matter what color you are. No matter what language you speak. Somebody's praying later for you. Praise God. That's what I believe. Hallelujah. I love you too. Praise God. But anyway, God bless you. God keep you. Remember, God love you. So do I tell you. Have a wonderful, blessed day. God bless you and your family. Stay up. Be strong. You know, don't worry about the don't. Worry about the what you need to do. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And God bless you today as well as every day. Until next time, you have a blessed day. God bless you and your family anyway. You know, and God, God has to be first. God, just be obedient to God. Because He cares and loves you. No matter what you've done yesterday, don't worry about yesterday. Yesterday, done deal. You're there another day. Glory be to God. Begin, move on, and live, and be happy. In Jesus' name. See you later next time. God, say the same.